Hey everybody, my name is Oscar Martinez and today I'm going to be showing you how to make two versions of a Maleficent cake. I'm going to show you how to make a cute version and then I'm going to show you how to make a realistic terrifying version. I love the way that the realistic one came out so let's get started. Now before we get to it, make sure you hit the like button because it helps me and the notification bell so that you can see all of the videos as they get posted. You'll be notified. Hence the name notification bell. Now for this cake, I am using my skull cake pan. The pan is shaped like the skull so you pop it out and a whole bunch of work has already been done for you. There are links in the description box so you can purchase this for yourself and you can make this cake. And so many others. I'm going to be overusing this on this channel for the rest of the life of this channel. I want this to be a flat cake so I'm cutting out quite a bit of cake. Now don't worry, uh, this cake didn't go to waste. As you can see, I ate <laughs> a lot of the leftover cake. It's good. It's funfetti cake. And I usually hold back when I'm eating funfetti cake, but not this time. I'm cleaning up the edges of my skull and then I started to work on Maleficent's horns. I'm using a 10 inch square cake to create Maleficent's horns. I just created a pattern, placed it on top and cut it out using a paring knife. Now the tip of Maleficent's horn, I'm actually just going to create that with fondant. I was scared that if I created it with cake, it wouldn't hold up because it's so small. And you better know that I'm gonna eat all of that cake as well. <laughs> so I fit my skull cake in between <laughs> my two horns. I'm not even joking you guys, I'm gonna eat all that cake. I just started to shape my Maleficent horns. Pretty basic shape, I'm just rounding down the edges. It doesn't look like Maleficent yet. It just looks like a really awesome skull. Maybe even like a devil with horns kind of a skull. But it'll get there. Now just like any of my cakes, I'm cutting them in half so I can fill them with some buttercream. And I decided that I was going to create the horns and the head of Maleficent separately just because I wasn't really sure if this was going to fit in my fridge. <laughs> Yo, I got limited space. We got eggs, we got kale, we got some egg beaters and eggs. That's a lot of eggs. So I'm adding buttercream and just crumb coating everything separately. Now this skull cake is the best thing in the world for face cakes, you guys, I'm telling you. I can't believe I waited this long to create face cakes with this mold. One of the problems that you run into when you're creating a face is depth. The, what it looks like from the side. Because so much of the time your face falls flat. This makes it so that the cheekbones are in the right place, the eyeballs are gonna be in the right place. It's right where it's supposed to be. I don't need to have to like measure. It's just there, it's done. But there is some work that has to be done because I'm not creating a skull. So I'm using some leftover cake ball dough and just filling in where the nose crevice is because I'm gonna have to actually put a nose there. I filled in the teeth and kind of just accentuated the cheek area because I know that Maleficent has really nice, really defined cheeks. Her bone structure is immaculate, you guys. I feel like I've said that before, but it's true. I gave this a crumb coat with gloves because spatulas don't do the trick on skull cakes. They're too flat. And after I gave this a crumb coat, I placed it into the fridge to chill and I started to work on my kawaii cake. This version of Maleficent is so much easier. I'm just using a six inch round cake to start. And I cut it in half and took off the dome part. Again, I just ate it later on. <laughs> and I'm using a six inch square cake as well to create Maleficent's horns. There's so much excess cake. I know a lot of you guys have problems with that because I have to waste it, but it all goes down. <laughs> it shouldn't though, because I shouldn't be eating this much cake on a Tuesday, really? But I am. Just cutting out the basic shapes placing them on my cake board and creating my basic Maleficent shape. Very simple. Just the round cake and two horns. Then I'm adding some buttercream. 
Now I had a lot of leftover buttercream from a previous project, so I'm adding some green and purple buttercream to fill in my Maleficent cake, which matches because these are the colors that Maleficent has, purple and green, except it's usually a lighter green. On goes a crumb coat. Um, and because this is a simpler cake, I'm not gonna be working with the fondant too much. I didn't even put this in the fridge. I just started to add fondant. So we got green, a very olive green, and then black to create her headdress. I wanted to keep this really simple because the realistic version of this headdress, yo, it, 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 w w complexity, yes. <laughs> I don't know how to put together a sentence sometimes. Now I am gonna add just a little bit of detail, kind of like the animated version, but I am gonna add like sort of like three dragon scales because that's some of the detail that the live action movie has. One of the things that I'm really proud of with this cake, the lips. I think that Maleficent's lips on the kawaii cake look so cute. And the eyelashes too really add a lot to this cake. To make it stand out even more, I'm painting a little bit of purple just to highlight her eyes so they don't look so flat. And voila, my kawaii Maleficent cake was complete. Simple, but still very satisfying. Now let's move on to the realistic version. Now I'm adding fondant to create the bridge of her nose as well as her nostrils. Um, and I screwed up just a little bit because the bridge of her nose is a little too thick, but this was one of the first cakes I created using the skull cake pan. And so, I mean, it's a learning process. I started to shape her nose, give her this really tiny Maleficent nose, and then I started to create her eyes. And initially I was I used fondant pieces to create the eye and then I kind of messed up there too. Because <laughs> I'm gonna add more fondant to create your eyes later on. She has really defined cheeks though. I really had to make sure that when I added red fondant to create her lips that I made them just as voluptuous and as full as Angelina Jolie's lips. Because her lips are like some of the most sought out lips in the industry. I mean, Octomom designed her whole face around Angelina Jolene. Do you remember that? Now, because white fondant is easy to blend, it's really easy to create the eyeballs and the eyelids. I was scared that you were gonna see the seams later on in the final product, but it's seamless. Once I finished shaping Maleficent's face, it was time to add her horns as well as the small pieces of fondant to create the tips of the horns. And I'm just gonna fill in all of the gaps that I had in between each of the cakes with some black fondant. And then I started to create her headdress. I am extremely happy with the way that the live action version of the movie brought this headdress to life because it doesn't look like this evil crown of horns, you know? It looks like, it looks like a wrap. It looks like Erica Vadu created this headdress for Maleficent. And I'm not mad at that. It looks pretty bomb. Now after I wrapped her horns and her forehead with the fondant, I started to score it using some fondant tools. Because it is a wrap, I wanted it to look like it had a lot of fabric lines to fit around each of Maleficent's horns. Then I added three dragon scales, just like I did on the kawaii version. After that, it was time to start painting. I added purple to her eyelids. First of all, I was trying to go for like a makeup version, but then I realized that I wanted it to just be like her skin. It's purple there. Felt like maybe it should just look like magic has surrounded her eyes and purple and green. Then I started to add some eyelashes as well as some eyebrows. Creating eyebrows makes me feel like a beauty guru, but also like a beauty guru who doesn't know what he's doing. It would be really easy to just leave this unpainted, but I wanted her to look 
more evil than anything else. So I added some magical like veins underneath her eyes. Like she's really stressed and the magic is like leaking out of her eyes. That's what I imagined. <laughs> Ooh, and she got some of that Fenty lip gloss. Wow, I am mad at that. After that, it was time to create her eyes. I wanted them to be green, just look as magical as all heck. And then I just highlighted her cheeks with some magic sauce and a little bit of diluted black food coloring. Now her horns are wrapped in leather and to give it that sort of leathery look, I'm painting each of the horns with a little bit of piping gel, just so that they shine. Voila, my Maleficent cake was complete. Those lips are stealing the show, you guys. Now after I created this version of my Maleficent cake, I wanted it to look even more evil. She is the mistress of evil and I wanted this cake to represent that. Most of the work I did was on her eyes. I took out her pupils and I just painted them a lime green so it looked like she was in the middle of like a magical spell. I darkened the purple makeup around her eyes and those stress veins, I just enhanced them and painted them a really nice olive green. Ooh, and I added some on her cheek, on her forehead. She definitely looks a lot more evil. But those lips though. Now just like the animated movie, I added some purple detail to her horns. I should have just added this before. I love the way that they look. This definitely looks more evil than just plain old leather. Once I finished with that, my brand new evil Maleficent cake was complete. I love all of the new elements that I added. I love how much green magic is like swirling around her eyes. I love the purple in the eyeshadow, even though it looks disgusting and she put it on when she was in a dark bathroom. But those lips though, man. So I created this Maleficent cake at the same time that I created my Joker cake and I could not be more proud of the result. Being able to create this Maleficent cake as magical and as bomb as it turned out means that my Elsa cake when Frozen 2 comes out is gonna be just as epic. Now I'm curious, which one of these cakes do you like best? Do you like the cute version? I don't know, I don't think so. <laughs> or do you like the swirling magical evil version? This one for sure. I mean, the cute version is cute, but it ain't all that. <laughs> now make sure you check out all of my Maleficent cakes. I'm proud of all of them, except for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love you. I will see you very soon. Peace.